In this video, we're going to learn how to check if two strings are equal using recursion in C. So let's create two test strings. We'll declare a car array called string one and we'll store into this car array the string A, B, C, D. Then we'll declare a car array called string two and we'll store into this car array the string A, B, C. Now we'll also include the stdbool.h library because we're going to use the bool type and the values true and false in this program. Now to solve a problem using recursion means to solve a problem by having a function which calls itself. Let's declare that recursive function. We'll call the function string equals. The function is going to return true if the strings it's passed as arguments are equal and false otherwise. So we'll give the function the return type bool. The function is going to be passed both strings as arguments. So we'll have the parameters car star s1 and car star s2 for those arguments. We'll copy this and supply a definition of the function down here. Now strings in C end with what's called the null terminator character. So at the end of both of these strings, we have the special null terminator character represented with backslash zero. Now to solve this problem, we're going to use this fact because if we go through a string one character at a time, we'll know that we've reached the end of the string once we encounter the null terminator character. Now these parameters here are what are called pointer variables. So when we call string equals and we pass it our strings, string one and string two, what's really being passed is the memory address of the first character in these strings. So for example, when we supply string one here as an argument, what's really being passed to the function is the memory address of this first character here, uppercase A. And S1 is a pointer variable because of this star here and a pointer variable stores memory addresses. Specifically, S1 is going to store the memory address of a car value. Now, there are two tools we can use to help us work with pointer variables. One is called pointer dereferencing. So here, if we have star S1, what this will do is dereference the pointer. It's going to give us the value that S1 points to. So in this case here, star S1 is going to give us uppercase A. Now we can also use what's called pointer arithmetic. So here, if I have S1 plus plus, what this will do is modify S1 to point to the next character in memory. So when the function is first called with string one as that first argument, we would say that S1 is going to point to this first character in the string, uppercase A. But S1 plus plus will have S1 point to the next character in the string. So S1 would now point to this uppercase B here. And then if we had S1++ again, it would then point to this character here, uppercase C. So we can use pointer arithmetic to go through each character in the strings, and we can use pointer dereferencing to access each character in the strings. Now in terms of the actual algorithm to solve this problem, when the function string equals is first called, S1 is going to point here to the first character of string one, and S2 is going to point here to the first character of string two. And the first thing we'll do is check to see if those characters are not equal. Because if this character does not equal this character here, say for example, because it's uppercase X, that would tell us these strings are not equal. And we could stop right there and just have the function return false. But if these characters are equal, then what we'll do is use pointer arithmetic to increment these string pointers. And then we'll have S1 point here and S2 point here then we'll have the function call itself again. And the function will then check to see if these characters are equal. And again, if they're not, we can have the function return false. And if the characters are equal, then the function can increment the string pointers and call itself again to check the next pair of characters. Now, eventually we do need recursion to stop. So we're gonna have recursion stop once we reach the end of at least one of the strings. So if we increment these pointers again, because these strings are not of equal length, what we'll have is that S2 is currently pointing to the null terminator and S1 is currently pointing to the character D. So in this case here, these characters are not equal. Uppercase D does not equal the null terminator. So the function would return false. And that is what we would want because these strings are not equal. But let's say these strings were equal. In that case, we would have uppercase D here and the null terminator would come after. 
And then when S1 and S2 are incremented, they're both going to be pointing to the null terminator character. In this case, we're going to return true because what this means is that we must have gone through each pair of characters in the strings and never found characters which were not equal. And if that's the case, then the strings are equal. So we can return true in this special case that both S1 and S2 point to the null terminator character. So that is the algorithm. Let's implement it now. Down here, we'll dereference S1 and we'll dereference S2. And if these characters are not equal, then we're going to return false. So that's the case where the pair of characters in the strings are not equal. Otherwise, we'll check to see if S1 is pointing to the null terminator and S2 is also pointing to the null terminator. That's the special case where we're going to return true. So we'll have else if star S1 is equal to the null terminator and the character that S2 is pointing to is also the null terminator. In this case here, we're going to return true because we've reached the end of both strings. Otherwise, we'll increment the string pointers. So we'll have else S1++ and S2++. So S1 and S2 are now pointing to the next characters in the strings. Then we're going to return the result of calling the function again with these incremented string pointers. So we'll have S1 and S2 here. And now we can test out our function. So up here, if the function returns true, then we'll use printf to output that these strings are equal. So we'll have strings are equal followed by a new line character with backslash n. And if it returns false, then with the else case, we'll output that these strings are not equal. So we'll have printf and then strings are not equal followed by a new line. And right now, string one is set to ABCD and string two is set to ABCD. So if we save compile and run the program, we will get that strings are equal. Now, if here we had ABC and then ABCD, then if we save compile and run the program, we'll now get that strings are not equal. We could also test the case that one of the characters in the middle of the strings is not equal. So for example, maybe this character here is uppercase X. And again, if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here that strings are not equal. So our function is working. Now there are some changes we could make to the function. One thing we could do is use the prefix increment operator instead of the postfix increment operator. So this plus plus after S1 is what's called the postfix increment operator. And what we're doing is first incrementing this pointer to have S1 point to the next character in the string. So S1 is going to store the memory address of the next character in the string. Then here that value that new memory address that S1 is storing is being passed to the function. What we could do is accomplish both these things with one line of code. We could have here plus plus S1 and plus plus S2. This is what's called the prefix increment operator. What it's going to do is first increment this S1 pointer. So S1 will now point to the next character in the string and then the value of this expression is going to be that new memory address that S1 is storing. So the prefix increment operator is going to first modify the variable. It's going to have S1 store the memory address of the next character in the string. Then that new memory address that S1 is storing is what's going to be passed to the function here. And this could be used to reduce the lines of code in our solution because here we could just have else and then return string equals with plus plus S1 and plus plus S2. Now we could also make a modification to these parameters here. This function is never going to modify the characters that S1 and S2 point to. So we could have here const car star S1 and const car star S2 to make that clear. And then we could change the function declaration up here too. So we'll have const car star S1 and const car star S2. And if we save compile and run the program, it's also going to work. We'll get strings are not equal. So this is how we can check if two strings are equal using recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.
including courses to help you develop C programming projects.